Hello, good evening, and welcome to Lincoln View High School. Here tonight on WOSN, we've got a Northwest Conference softball matchup between the homestanding Lancers and the visiting Columbus Grove Bulldogs. I'm Garrett Seymour. I join alongside Dave Bowen. We'll bring you all the action today here in this NWC matchup. A couple of schools uh, that could factor into the NWC race here is the, uh, really, it, it's kind of crazy, Dave, already that we're working towards the sectional tournament draw this weekend. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel like we've got that much softball in, but but here we are working in a, a game that could feature um, important seating in, in the sectionals here. You're exactly right, Garrett. Great to be your wingman this evening. We have Columbus Grove coming in with a NWC record of two and two. Lincoln View has had several cancellations. They have an NWC record of one and zero. Oh. Grove six and four on the season up to this point. Lincoln View nine and one. Abby Steck Schulte will lead off today for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. In the circle for Lincoln View is Taylor Post, and she'll deliver today's first pitch. A strike. Quickly. And our game time temperature, 63 degrees, a sunny evening here. Just Great a for softball. slight breeze. Yeah, it's, slight uh, breeze. We'll, we'll take 63 on April 22nd. Blowing left to right is that breeze. That second pitch chopped on directly behind home plate. So quickly an 0-2 count to the first batter for the Grove Bulldogs. That 0-2 count, our umpire and crew, David Miller behind the plate, Stephen McCray on the bases. A couple of great umpires here at Lincoln View is the 0-2 pitch from post. Chop down the third base side, stays fair. The throw delivered from Ashlyn Price to Sydney Fackler for the first out. Actually, they called her safe. Oh, they Garrett, did get yeah, her safe. Yeah, she beat that out. So an infield single. That high hopper to third. Price had to wait on it, and I think that's what allowed Stetschulte to hustle down the line and reach safely for the first hit of the game. The first pitch up coming to Bree Hoffman, the left fielder. Tags her right on the left calf. She'll walk that one off down to the first baseline, but quickly. Two base runners on for Columbus Grove, who had a, a bit of a lineup change coming into today. They uh, are without Lauren Fierce tonight. Big bat in that lineup. Yeah, all she's doing is batting 577, leading the team with four doubles, 15 hits overall, and 15 RBIs. But if you're head coach Travis Gallmeyer, you like the start of this game right now. Two on, nobody out. Your number three hitter, Ariane Hefner, who bats 300, the sophomore does, stepping to the plate. Schultz squared a bunt, took a stab at it. That goes down 0 1 in that count. Hefner, the catcher for. Columbus Grove. Lincoln View's defense looks like this. First base, Sydney Fackler. Second base, Allie Miller. Laney Spear at shortstop. Third base, Ashlyn Price. Grace Brickner behind the plate today as Taylor Post delivers the 0-1. Now 1-1 one -one count. Post in the circle. Outfield from left to right is Emma Bowersock, Addie Stevens, and Sylvia Longstreth. As Post checks a wristband, comes playward with the 1-1. Chopped back over the screen. So a one two count. Yeah, Taylor Post, she is the ace of this Lincoln View staff. Doesn't have the most wins. She has three wins, and Sydney Fackler has six. But Coach Eric Schwab, he's saving Taylor Post for the big games. And right now, those are in the conference. Absolutely, especially when you, you've had those kind of those rainouts that you've only got yeah. one conference game in coming into today. As Post comes playward with a 2-2. Two -two. That one chopped a second. They'll go to second with it for one as Hefner will reach on the fielder's choice. So runners on the corners as the Lancers secure the first out of the inning. Nice play there by Allie Miller going to her shortstop Laney Spear. As you said, puts them on the corners now. And the cleanup hitter, Jade Seifker, stepping to the plate. Playing center field today for the Bulldogs is Seifker. Still just one down here with runners on the corners. It's the first pitch to Seifker. Hefner will take off for second. Defensive indifference will give her the base. And now two runners in scoring position. Seifker bats 393 for these Grove Bulldogs. 
Coach Goldmeyer would like to see her find some green grass out there right now, possibly score two with a hit. That pitch in for a strike as well as post nicks that inside corner. Runs the count to 0-2. Seifker with five RBIs on the season. As Post will stare into the dugout and get instructions on what the 0-2 pitch will look like with a pair of runners in scoring position. She comes Platebert, swung on and missed by Seifker. The first strikeout of the day secured by Taylor Post. That's a big K right there for Lincoln View and Taylor Post. The 0-2 pitch made Seifker go chase that a little bit out of the strike zone. And now her counterpart, Dakota Dunn, enters the box. She watches a strike on the first pitch. Post has not struggled with getting those first pitch strikes in by any stretch of the imagination here on the top of the first. Yeah, get ahead of the batters. Key to pitching. Dunn, the second leading uh, hitter for Grove with a 440 average, but she finds herself down two strikes. See if she can choke and poke, if you will, a little bit right here, Garrett. Put the ball in play. And Taylor Post on the opposite side looking for her second consecutive Lee's Famous Recipe chicken strikeout. And she'll come plateward with the 0-2. That one hits the outside corner, got her looking. And after Grove gets the first two runners on, they strand them. And Lincoln View will go to the bottom of the first, looking to put some crooked numbers on the scoreboard when we return here on WOSN. Today's scoreboard, sponsored by Red Oak Realty, rooted in excellence. Still zeros on the Red Oak Realty scoreboard as Columbus Grove got two on their first two runners. First two hitters on base. Our first three hitters, really. Yeah. And uh, we're unable to plate one. And Taylor Post, who grabbed a pair of strikeouts to end the top of the first inning, will lead off here in the bottom for the home standing Lancers. Yeah, Taylor Post leads Lincoln View with 17 runs scored, second on the team with two home runs. Dakota Dunn in the circle, 1.97 ERA, has only have only has 10 innings under her belt. 8K, six walks, 1-0 is her record. The first pitch bounces just after the plate, so Post watches the first one go by. A 1-0 count. As Post hitting 395 on the season. That's a little bit of power. Double. A couple of home runs to her credit. She watches the second one. Yeah, Dunn tried to go with the changeup right there. She's going to need to be able to throw that for a strike to keep these Lancer hitters just off stride a little bit, off balance. Hitters count, post fouls that one over the screen. Yes. Lincoln View quite the offensive power throughout the season thus far. 359 team batting average, 408 on base percentage. Got five home runs to their credit. Scored 99 runs coming into today. There's that change up, Garrett. Yeah, they have five players batting over 400 in Taylor Post. Uh, she doesn't count, but she's batting right. 395, she's as you said. Knocking on the door. She's got a base hit here. She'll be in that club. Yes. The 2-2 two -two count from Dunn. Swing and a miss. She sits down, Taylor Post. Swinging. So uh, first strike out there for Dakota Dunn. And that brings up Ashlyn Price, the third baseman. Left-hander steps into the box. She's third on this team in batting average at 464. The junior is talking with Coach Schwab, one of the most improved players on the squad this year, has been hitting the ball with ferocity as she fouls that first pitch off. Kind of back in the tree here down the third baseline. Yes. Price steps back in the box. One down here in the bottom of the first. Still goose eggs on the Red Oak Realty scoreboard as the pitch from Dunn missed wide. It came with the changeup. Again, I like the philosophy of Coach Gallmeyer and the Columbus Grove staff. We've got to mix it up, keep these Lancer hitters off, off stride. Got a foul ball from an adjacent field come on to the playing area yeah, here. Lincoln View Athletic Complex, a busy spot tonight. There's a JV baseball game, a varsity baseball game, varsity softball game. You're watching here on WOSN. Price steps back in the box, facing the one one count from Dakota Gunn. Pitch swung on. 
Yeah, I really like Price's wrist action. She can really wait and sit back and let that ball come right in there and then snap through with her hands. Looking for her second. Lee's famous recipe chicken strikeout facing the first two batters here. A one-two count to Price. Done comes Platewood. Change up one more time, chopped to second base. Fielded by Carly Aguari. And she records the out. On the 4-3 put out. Aguari just nice and solid there at second base. And that brings up Addie Stevens, the center fielder. Stevens, a 486 hitter. Eight doubles to her credit so far this season. 12 RBIs. Yeah, NWC second team selection both in 23 and 22, junior and sophomore year, freshman year, honorable mention. So she is not a stranger to postseason awards. And again, with that 486 batting average in Manning center field, she's going to put herself in position again for postseason awards. But again, I like Dakota Dunn's changeup yeah. right there. Stevens way out in front. Pulled the string on it. Evens account at one apiece. Two down here in the bottom of the first. Still scoreless on the Red Oak Realty scoreboard. Done. Comes Platewood. Sent into left field, into the glove of the chasing Bree Hoffman. And that will do it for the first inning of play. Still scoreless after the flyout here on WOSN. Strikeouts tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Top of the second inning being led off by Avery Burniser, the third baseman, a left-hander for Columbus Grove, steps into the box to take things off here at the top of the second. That pitch up and out of the zone to the third baseman. I know it's early, Garrett, but I like the plate discipline that the Grove players are showing thus far in the early going. As Burnesser will foul that one down the third baseline and out of play. Just a freshman hitting 250 this season. Five RBIs, no extra base hits just quite yet. But you're right, Dave, when you're in a spot where a pitcher like Taylor Post is in the circle, got to. Oh, that one just missed outside. Yeah, that's a hard one to lay off of right there. Nice plate discipline again by Avery Burnesser. And Coach Gallmeyer said his freshman starters, Burnesser and Hoffman, have been really, really impressive for him as freshmen playing at the varsity level. That one in for a strike at the letters. Runs the count to 2-2. Two -two. You're in the leadoff hitter in the second inning. Burnesser had her first career home run this past Saturday in a conference makeup game against Allen East, which the Bulldogs won 12 to seven. That pitch just missed outside. The Lancers wanted it. It runs the count full, 3-2. As Avery Burnesser steps in the box. Post checks the wrist. Comes Plateward with the payoff pitch. Chop back, just tipped back to the screen. And we'll do it one more time. That lead off at bat, just so critical for both teams. Yeah. Post bringing it, Burnesser battling. Payoff pitch one more time. Sky down the third baseline, out of play. Stays out of the baseball game behind us. Third, third attempt here to pay yeah. off pitch. Again, I'm, in, I'm impressed with Burnesser as a freshman, not intimidated by the veteran Taylor Post at all, battling in there. Swing and a miss on a high heat. That's the third consecutive least famous recipe chicken strikeout tallied by Taylor Post. Brings up the number seven hitter, Kirsten McCauley, a senior. Hitting just over, three, just at 300 on the season. That pitch down and out of the zone. Taylor posts again the ace of the squad for Lincoln View. 21.2 innings pitched. That 1-0 foul back 
off the first base side. Taylor brings an ERA of 2.26 in tonight's into tonight's NWC conference encounter. One ball, one strike, one out. Here on the second hitter. That pitch just a bit high. And Dave, you mentioned earlier that plate discipline from Columbus Grove so far has been on display. When Taylor Post has missed, it has not been by much. She's working the working the corners. That one down the middle for a strike. Evens the count at two apiece. Down the middle in the inner third. I just don't know what you can do with that pitch yeah. right there. That is nasty. McCauley, the senior, awaits the 2-2. Watches that one go up and out of the zone. And just like the first batter of the inning, we'll have a full count. Yeah, nice job by McCauley not to go after that rise ball. Post has been collecting some swinging strikeouts with that rise ball. See if she comes back with it. Swing and a miss, the fourth consecutive. Lee's famous recipe chicken strikeout from Taylor Post. The third swinging. As Tori Williams, the right fielder, will take her first at bat of the day. She brings an average of 154 into this ball game. Looking for her third hit of the season. The first pitch on the inner half for a strike at the knees. Williams even backed away from that thinking it was inside, but yeah, just catching the inner third. Taylor Post starting to really settle in. There you see it, an 0-2 count on that pitch. She's really starting to feel it. We're going to close the book here in the top of the second inning. See if they go with the rise ball. Nope. Got her, looking. And five consecutive Lee's Famous Recipe K's will close things here in the top of the second. Three up, three down, all going down via the strikeout from Taylor Post as we'll go to the bottom of the second when we return here on WOSM. The bottom of the second about to begin as Grace Brickner, the cleanup hitter, catching tonight for Lincoln View. Well, step into the right-handed batter's box. Yeah, Grace leading off the inning, batting 444 on the season, tied for first place with 13 RBIs. Not really an RBI situation. The only way she's going to get one here is putting it over the blue fence out there, Give I believe. Give it a ride Garrett. as the first pitch from Dakota Dunn just missed inside. Yeah, that 444 batting average, certainly something I'm sure Columbus Grove cognizant of here to lead off the bottom of the second inning. As that pitch up and out of the zone is Lincoln View looks for his first base runner of this Northwest Conference matchup. Yeah, it's Brickner's going to sit on a fastball here, 2-0. and oh. Dakota's got to get ahead of the count. Pitchers, or hitters pitch, there it goes. In the gap, that'll be a base hit for Grace Brickner. That first runner for Lincoln View is Brickner. Dances between the first and second bases, but she'll stop at first base on this single. To the gap in right center. And Laney Spears, a shortstop, will come to the plate as a courtesy runner. Trots out for Brickner. As yeah, that's number 12, courtesy runner, Kiara Brees for Lincoln View. Laney Spear, 406 batting average. She's got some power, leads the squad with three home runs. I've seen her hit some dingers in the past. and. When she gets a hold of it, it really goes, Garrett. Danger, dangerous situation here, but Dakota Dunn gets ahead in the count with that changeup yep. right away. That changeup in for a strike. Nobody down here in the bottom of the second. The pitch nearly got. Laney Spear, Brees will take second base on the pass ball. And just like that, a runner in scoring position for the shortstop. Dave said, 11 RBIs on the season. Over the 400 mark at the plate. As Spear looks to collect another RBI. Still scoreless on a Red Oak Realty scoreboard. Spear drives one to short. And the throw not in time. Spear will take first. 
Brees will take third, and runners on the corners with nobody down for the Lancers. So Spears going to reach safely on the air, and uh, Stetch only made the decision to throw. I think it would have she would have been better served to hang on to that one uh, after she bobbled it there short. But we got runners on the corners now for Allie Miller, the second baseman. That's 233. Spear will take off and swipe second base. So now two runners in scoring position. Situation where let's see if Coach Schwab decides to play a little small ball here with Allie Miller. Nobody down in the bottom of the second, still scoreless. As Dakota Dunn comes plateward with the changeup driven down the line. It's a fair ball. Two runs will score as Brees trots around. Spear directly behind her. A two-bagger for Allie Miller. Gets her two RBIs. And the Lancers take the first lead of the ball game. Yeah, Laney Spear, she went right away on that one. Brickner held it third to make sure it hit the grass. And then both of them were able to score easily on that hit by Miller. So much for small ball. Dave Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> well, still, still a runner now in scoring position with nobody down. As Sidney Fankel, the first baseman, comes to the plate. As the Lancers go over the 100 runs mark on the season in game number 11. Fackler, the senior, all she does is bat 500. Dribbler is short. Thrown to first for the out, go to third with it, trying to snag Allie Miller. She'll advance on the 6-3 put out. For this first out of the inning. Executed effectively all the way around. Stead Schulte fields and throws out Fackler. And on the throw, Miller moves up. A productive out for Lincoln View. Yes. Sylvia Longstrath comes to the plate. There's She'll your lay the bunt down. The run scores. Throw gets away at first. Longstrath will scamper to second. And the Bulldogs can't tally it out there. That was a squeeze bunt all the way, Garrett. And Lincoln View executes it to perfection. So a sack bunt gets the RBI, and it is now a 3 nothing game for the Lancers here on the Red Oak Realty scoreboard. Emma Bowersock, the number nine hitter for Lincoln View, will come to the plate. Bowersock, a 280 hitter. Six of her seven hits this season have been singles. But a single here. Might score a runner as she squares the bunt. The high pitch up and out of the zone. Right there on the show of the bunt, Avery Burnesser, she charged. Stetchley didn't get to third, but Longstrap didn't take advantage of it, stayed at second. That one in for a strike just under the letters. Evens account at one apiece. Yes. Bowersock. The bunt, such a big play in softball. We see it executed there in the previous batter. I was off by a batter with my small ball comment. <laughs> so a one-two count here to Emma, Emma, Emma Bowersock. Big pitch here for Dakota Dunn and the Grove Bull Lady Bulldogs. That pitch in nice. for the strike as Bowersock goes down swinging on the Lee's famous recipe chicken strikeout. And that will roll the order back over to the top to Taylor Post. Struck out swinging in her first play appearance. As Longstrength stands on second base, looking to be brought home. That pitch skied in the air, will stay in play. Corralled by Dunn on the pop-up, and that will close the book in the bottom of the second. Three on the board for the Lancers, however, in a fruitful bottom of the second. We'll go to the third when we return here on WOSN.
Carly Aguirre, the second baseman, will get started for Columbus Grove here in the top of the third. 3-0 lead for Lincoln View here on WOSN. Squared around to bunt Eric Aguirre, pulled it back in time. I'm Garrett C. Ryan alongside Dave Bowen here at Lincoln View. Aguirre got the defense moving on the show of the bunt. Aguirre the junior watches that one in for a strike. Looking for her first hit of the season. As we said at the top of the uh, show, the top the beginning of the game, Grove with a two and two conference record, six and four overall. Last year they were one and seven in the conference, and nine and eleven overall. So vast improvement already this year for the Grove Bulldogs. And got some contributions from some young players. As Bree Hoffman's hitting 394 as a freshman. Avery Burnesser hitting 250 as a freshman as Taylor Post comes playward. The 2-1, that one's in for a strike as well. Evens the count at two apiece. The Lancers, they finished third in NWC action last year at 6-2. 19-10 overall, but a great tournament run where they were district champions and advanced to the regional semifinal. Post fires it in for the K, another strikeout. Her sixth consecutive Lee's famous recipe chicken strikeout as Aguirre goes down swinging. Very impressive. You, you want to get to post early, <laughs> and I guess the uh, evidence bears that out a little bit here. She is in a groove, but she's back to the top of the lineup. Let's see what these Lady Bulldogs can do. Abby Steck Schulte reached on an infield single her first time up the leadoff hitter for Columbus Grove. Still turn the lineup over here on the top of the third. Post missed high on that first pitch. Steck Schulte, a 344 hitter. Swing and a miss at the second offering from Post. Evens the count at one apiece. She is really starting to get in a groove in the circle, bringing the heat. Her velocity, velocity is much higher now than it was at the beginning yes. of the game, Garrett. That one bounced in front of the plate. Runs a count to 2-1, but you're right, the, just the sheer velocity, the difference in pitches she can bring now feels a little different than the first three batters she faced against Columbus Grove back in the top of the first that all reached. That one driven down the third baseline. Foul ball called. Just barely for Abby Stead Schulte. Nice piece of hitting right there. It, it made the chalk fly just before it got to the third base bag and trickled to the foul side of third base. That couldn't have been more down the third base <laughs> yeah, line. Yeah, exactly. So a 2-2 count here to the leadoff hitter for Columbus Grove. One down, top of the third inning. Post, plateward. That one chopped and fouled one more time. So Stack Schulte hanging tough there in that right-handed batter's box. Lincoln View with four Northwest Conference championships to their credit. And Columbus Grove still looking for that elusive first conference championship in school history. 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, a seventh. Straight K for Taylor Post. Brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. I mean, Post has a strong defense out there behind her, but, man, it's nice as a coach when, you, when your pitcher can sit him down like she is right now. And you see virtually in the same spot as that strikeout pitch. It's a, on the outer half of the plate with some velocity. Not a whole lot you can do with it if you do get the bat on the ball. As Bree Hoffman watches the first one for a strike. Two down here on the top of the third. Post, plateward, swings and misses at the second offering. Does Hoffman. And we'll see how Taylor Post wants to play this one with seven consecutive Ks, trying to make it eight. <laughs> Below thought, the knees. Thought she had it. I think several blue and gold fans thought she had it as well. Bree's got those pants up to her knees, so that strike, that low strike's not going to count. A one, two, two down. Top of the third. That one missed something out. Changed the eye level of the hitter. Sure did. I, I'm very impressed that Hoffman was able to lay off of that one right in her eyes. Post. Comes plateward. That one off the tip of the glove. 
and Brickner will have to eat it. And so it's still a K. So eight consecutive. Mm -hmm. But air on the catcher. E2. Brings up Ariane Hefner. She reached on a fielder's choice in the first inning. Swipe second on the offensive indifference. Hefner hitting 300 this season. That's a home run to her credit. As Post comes playward on the first pitch, right to the third baseman. And Ashlyn Price makes the grab to retire at the top of the third. So that's the first out in an eternity that wasn't a strikeout, yes, Garrett. That is the first batter in nine. Did not get set down by Taylor Post via the strikeout. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Lancers with a 3 0 lead here on WOSM. Tonight's presenting sponsor, Lodix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. Lancers in the bottom of the third will bring the two, three, four hitters, Ashlyn Price, Addie Stevens, and Grace Brickner to the plate with a three nothing lead as Price dribbled one to second base. Back in the first inning, step back in the box. A 464 hitter as Dakota Dunn comes plateward, missed up and out of the zone on the first offering here in the bottom of the third. Eric Schwab again, the head coach for Lincoln View in the third base coaching box. Overall record of 44 and 15 in his third season. That pitch missed outside. Clay Ehrman, assistant coach in the first base I, box. I wouldn't, he trotted down to go to the first base box. I, I looked up and said, is that, is that Clay Ehrman? Yeah, I think those two guys, uh, we see them in the winter quite often. Yes, sir. On WSN officiating basketball. That pitch misses out. Side one more time, runs the count to 3-0. And that's the one thing Dakota Dunn has struggled with here in the early going is getting ahead in the count. As Price, uh, yes, Price awaits the 3-0 pitch. That one in for a strike. Had the take on. I didn't know if Coach Schwab might let her hit the way he said she's been on a tear. But 3-1, yeah. hitter's pitch right now. She's going to be looking dead red right here. Four, to drive it. 464 hitter. Skies that one into shallow center field coming on and making the grab is Jade Siefker. For the out. What? The home plate umpire signals out. Yes, okay. Nice catch by Siefker out there. She may have dropped it. I don't know. I was writing in my was scorebook. Gonna, I just yeah, there was some, it as an out. Some consternation yeah, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The head home plate umpire. David Miller says it was a put out. And that will bring up Addie Stevens, the center fielder. That one tagged her. The second hit by pitch we've had tonight. So she reaches on the HBP. And that brings up Brickner, who gapped one to the right center field wall for a single her first time up. Came around to score, did the courtesy runner, Kira Brees. One down here in the bottom of the third, one runner on is Brickner watches that one at the eyeballs. 4 a one count. Big at bat for the Lancers as they want to try and put a crooked number up there and blow this thing open and defensively for Columbus Grove. And Dakota Dunn, they got to buckle down. Brickner drives one down the third base line and out of play as Stevens was running on the pitch. The Lancers are a prolific stolen base squad. Are 24 of 25 coming into tonight's action. You take that? I, I think most folks would say, yep, yeah, I'll take 96% or whatever that, is, yep. whatever that number is. Four times on the quarter with 24, 96, yep. That there one they go. as they go, the throw high. Great play made at second base by Caroline, Car or Carly Aguirre to keep that from rolling into center field and putting Stevens at third base, but she'll swipe the bag. 
And now she's in scoring position. And as we said, Brickner tied on this team for most RBIs with 13. Takes a hardy cut at that change up, fouls it back to the screen. Evens count two at two. One down here in the bottom of the third. Lancers with a three nothing lead. Addie Stevens standing at second base as the cleanup hitter. Looks to bring her home. Dunn comes Blakeward. Chopped down the third baseline. That one's just foul. Stung down that line by Brickner. Lincoln View 9 and 1 on the season. Wins over Minster, Defiance, LCC, Salina, Marion Local, Leo, Indiana, Spencerville. And on Saturday, took two from Hicksville. Their lone loss against Fairview, 8 to 4. Done one more time. Got it past Brickner. Her second, third strikeout of the day. Big strikeout for Grove right there as they look to try and strand Stevens out there at second base. But you go from the frying pan to the fire with Laney Spear now at the plate. She'll try to avoid the least famous recipe chicken strikeout the Brickner just suffered. Spear reached on the air, pops that one high in the air into shallow outfield. It's dropped down as Stevens comes around to score to make it 4-0. As Spear put it in the right spot. She did. She found the middle of the triangle right there between second, right, and center. Give her the RBI. And Lincoln View pushes the lead to four. And that brings up Allie Miller. Two RBI double the last time up. Takes a hardy cut directly to the shortstop. And it's corralled by Abby Steckschulte, and that will end the threat here in the bottom of the third. However, Lancers tally another one. They lead 4-0 over Columbus Grove here on WOSN. Center fielder Jade Seifker will lead off the top of the fourth inning here for Columbus Grove, the cleanup hitter for the Bulldogs. As Taylor Post will come play where Seifker squares around a bunt, dropped it at the perfect spot, sprinting down the line. She is aboard for the first base runner since Ariana Hefner reached back in the first inning. Nice bunt right there, beautiful bunt. You couldn't have placed it any better right there by Jade Seifker. I like what Travis Gallmeyer's doing right here, trying to get that leadoff runner on any way he can, does so right there via the bunt. Why not bunt again right here? Let's see what Dakota Dunn does. That pitch at the letters for a strike. Yeah, it's just a great bunt for Jade Seifker in the perfect spot, sprinted down the line. And when you're trailing four nothing, you gotta get anybody on base you can get. And Seeker did just that, is done. The 440 hitter watches that pitch well up and out of the zone. It's a great snag by Brickner. Keep it from reaching the backstop and letting Seeker reach second base. You're batting 440. I guess maybe you don't go with the bunt right now, down four, but. That pitch at the shins. She needs to get even after striking out against Post in the first inning. Yeah, and Post went on a tear there after Ariane Hefner reached in the first. Struck out eight consecutive batters before a line out from Hefner. And the bottom of the third is Dunn takes a hardy chop at that one to even the count it to a piece. Travis Gallmeyer in his 10th season, 135 and 68 overall. In talking with Coach Gallmeyer last night, I, I think he is now the longest tenured coach in the Northwest Conference. That pitch misses outside. Yeah, 10 years is a, it's a nice little run there leading yeah. the program, especially today's high school sports landscape. Mm -hmm. Coach Carl Etzler at Crestview had that honor, after, but he retired after last season, handed it over to Travis. Payoff pitch up and out of the zone. And it's done <laughs> chuckling at herself. She tossed the bat to the wrong dugout. It doesn't matter. If you're going to first base, you'll do whatever yep. you need to do. She reaches Hustle, on the walk. Yeah, hustles <laughs> down there where assistant coach Greg Schrader mans the first base coaching box. That was the first walk for either squad today. 
Yeah, both pitchers been around the strike zone all day long. That's the first pitch to Avery Burnesser in for a strike. As we said earlier, hit her first career home run on Saturday. Uh, not to be greedy, but Coach Goldmeyer would take that in a I'm, I'm right here. I'm certain he would be over the moon if that yellow softball could go over the blue fence. As the 0-1 stabbed it, stabbed at it, runners advance on the pass ball. And Columbus Grove now with two runners in scoring position, trailing 4 nothing. here in the top of the fourth. You can take off that bunt look now with no force yep. on the bases. Nobody out. Burnesser, square, stabs at it, fouls it back to the screen. Runs a count to one, two. Grove trying to get that run across. I'm not so sure looking at Coach Burr or Coach Gallmeyer. I, yeah, I think he might have taken off the bunt. But that's just my theory. Let's see what happens here. Two strikes, I'm sure it's off now. Nobody down here in the top of the fourth. Bulldogs trailing 4 nothing. Post comes Plateward. That one just outside. A oh, bit of a change up. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a change up. And you have the ability to change speeds like that. Yeah. That's, a, that's tough to lay off uh -huh. there. I'm going to say uh, Burn Esser's non-verbals uh, she was thankful that wasn't called a strike right there. See she, what she does here. Count two, two, choked up. Dribbles it right back to the pitcher. Post will fire. Seifker will come. Plateward is in a tough spot. And she'll retreat back to third base. It's a nice job handling that with Sidney Fackler. Yeah, great job of running at the runner uh, with the softball right there. and Make that runner make a decision. Yeah, she got back to third safely, but Sydney Fackler, excellent fundamental defense right there, Garrett. And that brings up Kirsten McCauley, struck out back in the second inning. But you're right, make the runner make the decision before you throw the ball through the fence or anything like that. A nice play there by Fackler as the first pitch to McCauley swung on and missed. I like the cut by the senior right there, Kirsten McCauley. Good hard swing, didn't make contact, but... She's ready to get after it in there. Still just one down here at the top of the fourth. That pitch, down and out. Evens a count at one apiece. Big opportunity here with the Grove Bulldogs. Two runners on, one out now. Post, in at the knees for the strike. Knees in the inner third. That's a tough one right there to get a hold of. It's a nice pitch. So one, two count, one down as post comes Plateward. Fouled off the nub. Post went right back to that spot. McCulley able to make some contact that time. If you can consistently put that in that inner third, low part of the strike zone, that's a tough spot to do anything with as post comes Plateward one more time. Chop right to the first baseman. She'll step on first, come to the plate. Seifker scores. And gets the first crooked number. I guess technically it's a straight number on the score on the Red Oak Realty scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, yes, but nice job there by Fackler to get the out and then fired home. But Grove does get on the scoreboard here in the top of the fourth inning. So an RBI ground out for Kirsten McCauley. Puts us two down. As Tori Williams comes to the plate, a swing and a miss at the first pitch she sees. So wing picks up just a little bit here at Lincoln. Blowing from third base to first base side. Two down here in the top of the fourth. Post. Slides one right past Williams one more time. 0-2. Yeah, she's bringing the heat right now. There's no reason to throw a change up. Just bring the bread and butter and say, here it is. See what you can do with it, Miss Williams. The 0-2. Skied into right field. The catch is made by Sylvia Longstrath, and that will do it. Grove gets on the board. Cuts the lead to three. It's four to one after four and a half here on WOSN. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Lonix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Chanix Street in Van Wert or online at Lonix.com.
Lincolnview.com. Lincolnview with a three-run lead coming into the bottom of the fourth, looking to expound upon that as they will bring up the 79 hitter, Sydney Fackler, Sylvia Longstreth, and Emma Bowersock after tallying three runs in the second, one in the third. Like to keep a little bit momentum going. Here's Fackler grounding out to short in her first plate appearance as Dakota Dunn comes plateward. That one driven down the line and foul. Fackler quick through the zone right there. Hits with a lot of confidence. And again, when your batting average is hovering around the 500 mark, and we're not talking four at bats, <laughs> we're talking 37 now. Right plate in every game <laughs> coming mm -hmm. into today. 16 hits yes. in 10 games. Fackler watches that change up in for a ball. It's done at times, it's put that over the heart of the yes. plate and really I, mixed those speeds up. I like the thought right there with that pitch. You just got to be able to throw it for a strike or throw it to where the batter chases it. That one in front of the plate for a ball. The 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss as Fackler frustrated with herself there, knowing she chased one out of the, out of the zone to make it 1-2. Even with those two strikes, she's going to step in there with a lot of confidence. That one popped into shallow right field, and that's in for a single. Misplayed. She'll try to swipe second and does. So Sydney Fackler's single. Reach second on the E9, and that gets. The leadoff hitter aboard for the second time today for the Lancers. Yeah, nice piece of hitting with two strikes. Find some green out there. And again, that leadoff hitter on here to look to push her around with Sylvia Longstrath in the box. Longstrath squares to bunt. Pulled it back. Longstrath, an RBI already today. And that time Grove executes the wheel play, if you will. The third baseman charging, shortstop going to third. Fackler recognizes it, does not try and take the base. Long strength hitting 214 this year. Squared and watch that one in the dirt as well. So a 2-0 count. Yes. Dunn will have to put one over the plate here. 2-0 count, see if Coach Schwab takes off the bunt now and lets Long Strath hit. With Dunn having to bring one into the strike zone. Long strength a junior. Puts one into center field. Siefker coming on, makes the grab, staring at Fackler, daring her to run. She doesn't. And the F8 in the scorebook retires Longstrath. Siefker had to come a long way for that one. Got a good jump on it right away. Almost overran it a little bit. She closed it in on it so quickly. And you get that, the wind whipping just a little bit, hanging in the air, maybe a little, just a little bit longer than you expected. One down here in the bottom of the fourth. She'll drop the bunt down. Bowersock sprinting down the line. Nice. Retired, moving the runner to third. Nice play by Dunn and McCulley there to get the out. And moves Fackler to third. And brings up the top of the order. Taylor Post 0 for 2 on today. Struck out once and flew out to Dunn in the second inning. And it's Post. Swings at the first pitch. Come on, Taylor! A 395 hitter coming into today. She just seems to be a little bit off stride, does just, Taylor yep. Post. I've watched her hit over the years. And right now, Dakota Dunn has her number. And you see a hardy cut at the second pitch Taylor Post sees today. As Dunn trying to get out of the inning unscathed. With an 0-2 count, two down. Post two home runs on a season. The 0-2. At the letters for a strike three looking. And the Lee's famous recipe chicken strikeout. Second time Post has been retired on K's. And that will do it. We've played four complete. It's 4-1 Lincoln View here on WOSN.
Today's scoreboard sponsored by Red Oak Realty, rooted in excellence. Columbus Grove trailing 4-1 here at the top of the fifth. They'll pop a foul down the third baseline here on a bunt attempt by Carly Aguirre. And the Lincoln View defense ready for that bunt, first and third, charging hard, playing in to begin with. Taylor Post went on a tear there in the first, second, and third innings. Striking out eight in a row as the pitch in the dirt evens to count one apiece. Coach Gall Miller keeping the bunt on with Aguirre. Again, put it in play, make the defense execute. Yes, Taylor Post steps back in the circle. Comes playward on the 1-1. Aguirre offered at it. I think she pulled that uh, back. They'll say she enough, pulled yeah. it back, and two it's 2-1. Two one. One. Mm -hmm. So nice white job. shirt's breathing down her neck right yes. here. That one she offered at. Mm -hmm. Runs a count to two apiece. As Ashlyn Price is about even with Taylor Post. Now they back up, but sometimes some coaches, hey, I ask you to bump. The first and second strike, we're going to leave it on. See what Coach Gallmeyer does Gallmeyer does here. That pitch inside at the shins. Runs the count full 3-2 to Carly Aguirre. The second baseman leading off the top of the fifth here for the Grove Bulldogs. Taylor Post just steps back in the circle. The payoff pitch. That one fouled off by Aguirre. Bites that one off, gets the bat on it. Good battle again between pitcher and batter, the leadoff hitter of the inning. Just a bit late on that payoff pitch. We'll do it again. As Post, that one driven by Aguirre. Off the third base bag, and Carly Aguirre's got her first well, hit of. The home plate umpire, David Miller, called that a foul Ooh. ball. Aguirre was going to have her first hit of the season. Coach Gallmeyer just questioning it a little bit. So we'll do the 3-2 one more time. As a query. The Columbus Grove contingent, not real happy. No. And, and Coach, or uh, the umpire, David Miller, letting him know why he called it the way he did. Swing and a miss on a high strike. Aguirre thought she had a Base hit the first of the season, instead retired on the strikeout. And that will roll the top of the order back. Yeah, so hard to stay off of that rise ball. Columbus Grove, six and four, two and two in the conference. Wins over Arlington, Pandora Gilboa, Lima Senior, Patrick Henry, and Lipsick. And Allen East. Losses to Jefferson, Miller City, Crestview, and Continental. First pitch to you, Stink Schulte in for a strike. Post looks to make it 0-2. That one up and out of the zone. Stink Schulte laying off of it. Stead Schulte, a second team Northwest Conference selection back in 2022, honorable mention in 2021. That one popped up to short, just behind the second base bag, and Stead Schulte as her second base hit of the day. Nice piece of hitting by Stead Schulte with one out to give Grove a runner on the bases. And brings up Bree Offman, who was hit by a pitch her first time up and then struck out, but an error on the catcher. So she's been on base twice so far today. The left fielder for Columbus Grove, hitting 394. Foul that one back behind the screen on the first base side. Yeah, Abby Stetcholdy, as you said, Garrett, her second hit of the game. She is the leader of this squad. This team is built around her. Uh, she usually is in the circle, uh, but with uh, Lauren first being under the weather, Coach Gallmeyer, I keep saying Gallmeyer, I don't know why. <laughs> Gallmeyer had to make some changes. Travis, a good friend, he's going to be upset with me on that. That bunt laid down and will stop into the Left-handed batter's box, and Offman will retreat back to the box. 0-2 now the count. Now it's a tough bat to be out. 577 hitter mm -hmm. Lauren Fierce to four doubles on the season, three RBIs, three home runs, 15 of your RBIs. 
gone due to an illness today. Shuffles the lineup a bit. Bree Hoffman looking to get on base one more time. Chopped it back to Taylor Post. She'll go to first with it for the out. And it, just and like it, that, there's two down. Yeah, and it's not just that Lawrence under the weather not here that created some uh, issues for Columbus Grove, but had to change the lineup around and where everybody's playing position-wise, about four different positions now for players for, compared to what Coach Gallmeyer wanted right, to go best with. Best-case scenario that he wanted to. Game. Yeah. yeah, but they fared well. They're battling here. Yes, Arian Hefner. Skies one into shallow center field, making the grab is Addie Stevens to retire the Bulldogs. After five and a half, it's 4-1. Lancers with the lead coming to the plate when we return here on WOSN. Strikeout tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Ashlyn Price coming to the bank, coming to the plate for the third time tonight. 0 for 2 on the day. Looking to reach for the first time. Dakota Dunn facing 2, 3, and 4 here. The meat of the lineup for the Lancers. That one driven into left field. Gets past the left fielder. Will be extra bases for Price. She'll round second base and keep chugging to third. Price with the stand-up triple. On the first pitch, she sees here in the bottom of the fifth as the Lancers in scoring position on her first hit of the day. Nice piece of hitting by the left-hander. Goes with that outside pitch and drives it to left field. And the Lancers in business. Runner on third. Nobody out here in the bottom of five. Addie Stevens with 12 RBIs on the season coming into tonight. Came around to score after a hit by pitch and a stolen base back in the third. Watches the first offering up and out of the zone. Yes, the center fielder Stevens waits the pitch from Dunn. Skies that one will remain in play. And is grabbed by the third baseman, Avery Burnesser, for the out. So Grace Brickner. Comes to the plate now. That triple by Price, that's her second on the season. Sits down there now with one out. Yes. Brickner, 13 RBIs on the year. Takes a hardy cut at one, drives it into left field. It's over the head as Price comes around to score. Brickner at second with a stand-up RBI double. Makes it 5-1 Lancers. Got a hold of that one, did Brickner. Pushes it out there to left field. The wind played a little bit of havoc with it as Bree Hoffman was unable to come up with it. So she gets the RBI and puts herself in scoring position, Garrett. It's Laney Spear, RBI single back in the third. Comes back to the plate. Laney Spear, as a freshman, an honorable mention selection in the Northwest Conference last year. Hitting 406 so far this season. Three home runs and 11 RBIs. Love to put that yellow ball over the fence. As the shortstop, hitting in the five hole tonight. Awaits the 0 1 pitch from Dakota Dunn. Change up, driven down the third baseline, just foul over the bag. We've had more close, <laughs> fair foul calls at third in this game than sometimes you see in a whole season, Garrett. And, and, and there haven't been, you know, slow hit, but they have been well hit balls yeah. right down that line. Yeah. David Miller has been challenged behind the plate to make the right call, and he has done so. The 0 2 to Spear. In the dirt. Is a Long secondary lead from Brick, or from the courtesy runner at second base. Kira Brees in for Grace Brickner. It's done. The one two. Dribbled back to third base. They'll throw across the diamond for the out, and Brees will trot to third. 
Nice play there by Avery Burnesser to throw out Spear for the second out of the inning. And Allie Miller, the second baseman, two RBI double back in the second, lined out to short in the third. A runner on third base, the first pitch she sees, a change up, low and out of the zone. Two down here in the bottom of the fifth. It's a 5-1 lead for Lincoln View on the Red Oak Realty scoreboard. As Allie Miller awaits the 1-0 from Dakota Dunn. That one got her just on that elbow. And two runners aboard now. As Dunn has not been afraid to come inside just a little bit. Second hit batter she's had today. Now you'd say, okay, work through it, you're all right. The problem is, is though, <laughs> you're going up now against Sydney Fackler, also coming into this game tied with 13 RBIs with Brickner. She sees the opportunity right here and hits it hard. It's down the line and just foul. She put a drive into that one. Fackler reached on a single. The last time up. Yes, Brees stands on third. And Miller on first. The L1. She pulled that one foul. She's about as far up in the box she can be. Drives it to left field directly at Bree Hoffman, who makes the catch to end the fifth. We'll go to the sixth. Bulldogs hanging tough with the Lancers. It's a 5-1 lead for Lincolnville here on WOSN. Tonight's presenting sponsor, Lodix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Scenic Street in Van Wert or online at Lodix. Dot com. The cleanup hitter leading off for Columbus Grove. Jade Seeker dribbles one down the first base side where it's corralled and stepped on the bag by Sidney Fackler for the first out. Seeker with a solid swing right there, jumping on that first pitch. Hits it hard, but as you said, Sidney Fackler right there to clean it up for the first out of the inning. Seeker had scored the only run of the game so far for Columbus Grove. Is Dakota Dunn struck out the first time and walked to the second. Fouls on it down the first baseline. With the four run lead, Taylor Post, it looks like the attitude is here it comes, hit it. Just yep. firing it down the middle, Garrett Post. The old motto e mono. Yeah. Do something with it, I yep. dare you. As that one's driven back to Post, gets past her. At short, throwing a strong throw from Laney Spear, retires. Dakota Dunn. I'm going to go one to six to three on that because I think that touched post glove first. Yep. So one to six to three. Two up, two down. Taylor Post again. Um, junior and sophomore year. She's a senior now, junior and sophomore year. First team Northwest Conference selection. And I bet she has eyes on that player of the year category as far as conference honors go. Avery Burnesser in the box. Watches the first pitch in for a strike. Has she hit from the left side the first two times and now it's moving to the right? She did, yes. And it is Avery, number 18. She's 0 for 2 on the day, a strike out, a ground out to third. She'll try from the right side. Watches that pitch up and out. Switch hitter against the right-hander. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. right. Maybe she felt See it a little better from the right side than the left side? Well, what that tells you, Garrett, is that she has played a lot of softball, loves the game, works at it. Yeah, if you can go both sides as a freshman. Yes. <laughs> For your coach to have confidence in you to go either side of the, the plate as a freshman, you have put some time in to prove to him that, that you have that, that, that ability and deserve that, that option, that opportunity. Post the 2-1 pitch. Swing and a miss from Burnesser. Runs a count, 2-2 two, two, with two down here in the top of the sixth. This post checks the wristband, steps on the rubber. 
Comes Playward and blows it past Avery Birdesser for the strikeout. The tenth of the day for Taylor Post on the least famous recipe. K will end the top of the sixth. Will go to the bottom half with the Lancers leading 5-1 on WOSN. Today's score reward sponsored by Red Oak Realty, rooted in excellence. The Lincoln V. Lancers with a 5-1 lead on that Red Oak Realty scoreboard, looking to grow that advantage here in the bottom of the sixth as they'll send the eight 9-1 hitters to the plate. Sylvia Longstreth, the right fielder, due up first. She's got a sacrifice bunt to her name in this game, as well as a fly out to center field. And change up from Dakota Dunn in for a strike on the first pitch of the inning. Dunn out in front of the count. As another change up, swing and a miss. Gets Dakota Dunn 0-2. Yeah, Dakota has done a really nice job of all day of keeping the Lancer hitters from just playing power ball with her. And that change up right there, great example. That one, the 0-2 foul back to the bleachers, directly behind home plate. Dunn came into today with a 196 ERA. Just over 10 innings pitched. And a 1-0 record. Struck out eight coming into today. She's got four strikeouts on the day against one of the better or maybe the best team in the conference. The 0-2 Joss missed outside. Great place for that pitch right there. Now maybe come up and in. And Sylvia Longstreth. Awaits the 1-2. Chops it back to Dunn. She'll make the throw over to first. For the first down of the inning. Dunn does a nice job fielding the position right there to get that all-important first batter first out of the inning. Emma Bauer shocked the left fielder. 0 for 1 technically all the day. Struck out back on the second. A sack. Fly back in the fourth. And she'll slap that one into the right left field. And Emma Bauer shocks first base hit of the day. Top of the strike zone. Emma went up there and got it. Drove it nicely into left field. One out base runner for the Lancers. Taylor Post, the leadoff hitter for Lincoln Beal. 0 for 3 on the day with a pair of strikeouts. One looking, one swinging. For the pitcher, the counterpart for Dakota Dunn. Here in the bottom of the six, a 5-1 lead for the Lancers. Pitch up and out of the zone. With my unofficial eyes, Garrett, I think we have around 175 unofficially. 175 people turn out for tonight's colossal confrontation. That feels like a good estimate. That pitch up and out of the zone, and probably saw what's well, game time temperature 64. I think we're probably mm -hmm. down to. It says 63, but it sure feels like it's a 59 or maybe now. This post awaits the 2-0 pitch from Dunn. Swung on down the third base line right at Bree Hoffman, who makes the grab. That was an atom ball right there. Taylor Post tagged that one, but Bree Hoffman, Johnny on the spot. Garrett, two outs in the inning now. It's a well-struck ball by Taylor Post, but right at Bree Hoffman. And Ashlyn Price, who had a triple the last time up, the stand-up variety. Back in the fifth, comes to the plate in the sixth with a runner on first. Change up, going is the runner. Stand up, stolen base by Emma Bowersock. Again, with the outcome is still in doubt here, but Dakota Dunn, regardless of the final score, she's going to be able to walk away from this contest having Taylor Post go 0 for 4 against her. That's a yeah. nice, nice accomplishment for Dunn, the sophomore pitcher. Bounces that one in the right-hand batter's box. Evens the count at one apiece on the Red Oak Realty scoreboard. Here in the bottom of the sixth, a 5-1 lead for the Lancers. Runner on second base with two down. And Ashlyn Price at the plate. Change up, swung on by Price. Deep center field, back, track, wall, gone. Ashlyn Price, a two-run dinger. The shield trot around, touch them all and grow that lead to a 7-1 advantage. Little too fat in the middle of the plate was Dakota Dunn on that pitch, and Ashlyn Price, the player that before the game 
asked Coach Schwab, who's your most improved player? He said, well, I don't know if she's improved that much, but Ashlyn Price is just a tear right now offensively. Straight away center field. That one was deep, and it definitely was not playable, Garrett. Got it over that center field fence. A nice shot there from Ashlyn Price, the third baseman. And there's a swing and a drive right at Hoffman in left field to retire the Lancers in the bottom of the sixth, but it was a fruitful half inning for the blue and gold. A two-run homer by Ashlyn Price grows the lead to seven waters. We'll go to the last chance for the Bulldogs when we return here on WOSN. Tonight's softball game brought to you by Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Sheenan Street in Van Wert. Or online at Lodix.com. A base knock for Kirsten McCauley on the first pitch she sees here in the top half of the seventh. The last chance for the Bulldogs. And they get the leadoff runner aboard. Sometimes when you're down on the scoreboard in the late innings, you, you want to teach your players, hey, let's make them throw a strike. But with Taylor Post, she's going to bring a strike. So why not be aggressive? And that's what Kirsten McCulley does right there. Nice drive to right field. Tori Williams takes a half-hearted cut at the first pitch she sees. <laughs> and we could see her eyes as she turned there a little bit like, whoa, oh. I don't think I was going to get that yeah. one. But that was a strike right there yeah. on the inner third again from Taylor Post. Maybe wasn't expecting first pitch fastball there. <laughs> and that one up and out, evens the count at one apiece. Yeah, with the six-run lead again, we, we saw it in the last inning for sure. Taylor Post, she's just going to serve it up there with some heat behind it. See it hit it if you're Grove. That's second strike for Tory Williams. Has two hits on the season, one of them a triple, however, coming into tonight. See it hit it if you're Grove, but much easier said than done, Garrett. Yes, Taylor Post with 10 putouts via the strikeout so far. Makes it 11. She pulls her string there, a changeup. Williams got out in front of it, goes down swinging for the first out here in the top of the seventh. Carly Aguirre comes to the plate now. Thought she had her first hit of the season last time up. Dribbled one down the third baseline on a full count pitch. Got called foul, struck out swinging for the second time today. She watches the first one at the eyes for a ball. Aguirre playing second base today for the Bulldogs. As Taylor Post comes plateward. Dribbles that one in. Yes, Kirsten McCauley stands still at first base. Aguirre back in the box. Chops that one back to third base line. It's scooped out and thrown across the diamond for the out. A strong throw made by Ashlyn Price. Yeah, Price has really had a good game Obviously, with the home run in the last inning and defensively down there at third. Didn't get to that one on the big hop. Did a great job of fielding that off the short hop and throwing Aguirre out. Tough play there at third. Absolutely. Nicely executed. So two down here in the top of the seventh is Abby Steck-Schulte. Well, sky one into right field, going back over the right fielder's head. The run will come around to score as McCauley. Scores on a stand-up double as Sylvia Longstreth. Tough read out there with the window whipping. An RBI double for Abby Steckschulte. So the two hits in this inning by Columbus Grove off of first pitch strikes as yes. McCulley singled to right and right there, Steckschulte with the first pitch double. That first pitch into Bree Hoffman is in for a strike. And Post said here it comes again right there, the catcher's glove of uh, Grace Brickner, it really popped on that one. Two down here in the top of the seventh. Last chance for the Bulldogs as Hoffman fouls that one back and they're down to their last strike. With a runner in scoring position after the REI double by Steck Schulte. Post with 11 Ks on the day. That one. 
just a little bit out of the zone. Real nice hold by Bree Hoffman on the rise ball right there. So hard to lay off of. She does a great job right there. The one, two. Two down, top of the seventh. That one trailed down the line, cutting foul. And here's the catch made. Yes. Down the left field line by Emma Bowersock. What a great play. Is thought that one was almost going to be out of play. Instead, Emma Bowersock makes the grab to end things. Columbus Grove puts, a, puts one on the board here in the seventh. But Lincoln View hangs on for a 7-2 victory here over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Yeah, really good game here tonight, Garrett, by both squads. Uh, Coach Gallmeyer, he, he talked to me about how his team has that stick to this year. They battle, and we saw that on display. Yeah. They were behind, but no negative nonverbals by this Columbus Grove squad at all. And a really good last inning. They put one on the board, hit the ball hard. Just not enough firepower overall. And for Lincoln View, Garrett, wow. Yeah. As advertised, they come in here, they execute, and they come away with the 7-2 victory. We see Taylor Post in the circle. The uh, ace of the Lincoln View squad does what she needs to do at that point in time, and then some timely hitting. Ashlyn Price with a triple and a home run today to lead the offensive attack for the Lancers. And a great spot in the circle there by Taylor Post. Gives up five hits, scatters five hits, really over seven innings of work. 11, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken strikeouts. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, a home style, happens here. But uh, maybe not the most complete performance at the plate by the Lancers. I'm sure they've got some, you see those numbers to the left on base spots that I'm sure uh, they'll talk about, but otherwise, that's a it's a nice performance and a nice league win there for the Lincoln V Lancers and a, and a nice performance in the circle by Taylor Post today. Yes, absolutely. With the win, Lincoln View improves to two and zero in conference play, ten and one overall. Grove falls to two and three in league action, six and five overall. But again, as we said, both teams can take a lot of things from this game and continue to improve upon. And as the tournament draw right yep. around the corner, they can get ready to roll and be prepared come tournament time, OHSAA uh, softball style. That will do it for today's broadcast. Appreciate today's presenting sponsor, Laudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. The Red Oak Realty scoreboard, the final score, the final time, reads 7-2, Lincoln View, the victory over Columbus Grove. For Dave Bowen and our fantastic WOSN crew, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long. We'll catch you next time here on WOSN. <laughs>